What up, everybody? It's Instructor Boots back again, talking about tape diagrams, this time with fractions. So we have two objectives today. The first one is to understand what a tape diagram is. The second one is to look at three example fraction problems and how to solve them using the tape diagram. So first of all, what is a tape diagram? We touched on this in our last um, video about tape diagrams with whole numbers, but just in case you didn't watch that, we'll touch on it again. Um, a tape diagram is a visual model used to show the relationship between numbers. It looks like a strip of tape. Um, it's also known as a strip diagram or a bar model. And there are four different types. There's a part-whole model, ratios and multiplication comparison models, additive comparison models, and the fraction model. Today we're going to focus on the fraction model. We focused on the other three in our whole number and decimals video, which we would love for you to check out. So our first problem is a fractions of a whole. This is one of the most difficult ones, I think, for students to really grasp. Um, and a lot of times, if we don't give them a concrete strategy of a picture or something they can draw, these are the ones that can be really confusing to them. So it says, Isabella had 120 cards in a box. Of those cards, she gave six tenths to Gina. How many cards did Isabella have left in the box? So as always, we want to start with our statement. Um, so our statement just, ooh, with good handwriting, simply just restates the question so that we know what our focus is as we answer it. So Isabella had blank cards left in the box. And so that tells me a couple different things. One, I'm looking for anything about cards. Um, I'm especially focused on Isabella. And I see this word left in the box. And so I'm already thinking that there might be an extra step, extra step for this question. So Isabella had 120 cards in the box. That is important. Of those cards, and the, those cards are talking about the 120. So of 120, she gave six tenths to Gina, and I want to know how many she had left in the box. So I know I'm going to be drawing my tape model. Okay. And I know that I'm going to be drawing a hole right here. And my whole tape model is worth 120. I know my denominator is 10. So I'm going to split this into 10. So I'm going to try to split it into half first and then kind of guesstimate. Try to make equal pieces as, as best I can because fractions are equal pieces. Um, so we don't want students to be so focused on drawing equal pieces that it takes them forever to get started. I know we all have students like that, but we do as best as we can want to try to make it equal pieces. So I should have 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I know that of those, right, she gave 6 tenths to Gina. So label Gina right here, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I know that obviously the rest would be left. And the best part about this is, I already know that I'm looking for my question mark is going to be these four tenths. I'm not looking for the six tenths I gave to Gina. And sometimes if we don't have a word problem strategy, our students would figure out six tenths of 120 and say that was the answer. Now I know that I'm looking for whatever's in these four pieces. Well, I need to figure out how many pieces or how many are in each piece. So this is a, these are fractions, right? Which means each one's going to be equal. I have 10 equal ones which means my total is 120. I'm gonna divide that into 10 equal groups, which is gonna give me 12. And I'm gonna label each of those as 12. And then I know because of my statement that I'm not looking for anything about Gina, I'm looking for these four groups right here, which is gonna give me 48. My question mark is 48. Now, the great thing about this tape diagram is, right, the other question they could have asked is, how many did you give to Gina? Well, this also solves that question, but because I wrote a statement, I knew where to put my question mark and where to answer it. So if we look at this next question, Jamie made some cookies last night for dinner. She gave her sister some, she gave her uh, other sister some, she still had some left. How many cookies did she start with? So my statement's gonna say, she started with blank cookies. And I'm going to be looking, obviously, for anything about cookies. And so I know that she gave some to Vanessa. She gave some to Kellen. She had some left over. Um, now, please forgive the fractions not being 
written like a real fraction, but kind of on the side right here. I know that can be confusing, um, but smart boards kind of hard to use sometimes with that. A lot of times, if we again, if we don't have a word problem strategy, our students are thinking, okay, well, they gave some, so that must be subtraction. And then she gave some, so it must be subtraction. And then they get kind of confused. But my question isn't asking me how many she gave away, it's how many that she, did she start with. In other words, I'm looking for the total that she had before she gave some away. So there are different ways to do this tape diagram. One would be really complicated. You split them all into uh, the actual fractions. I'm just going to use a part whole model for this. And so I know that I'm looking for my question. I know that I gave some to Vanessa and that was four, right? I know that I gave some to Kel and that was a little bit less, right? That was like two. And then I know that she also had some left, which means my tape diagram is way too big down here. Because remember, tape diagrams, you want to kind of show the relationship between the numbers. And so I'm just going to go ahead and fix that right there. Oops. And put my question mark. So here's Vanessa, right? Here's Kellen. Here's how many she had left. Vanessa was four and two thirds. Um, hopefully, right? You can write that down. Kellen was two and two sixths. And then she still had three and four six left over. So if I add up what she gave away plus what she had left, that's going to give my give me my total. Now, obviously, you have to find your common denominator. So that's something you would uh, talk about with your class, right? But really, this is going to become four and four six, whatever way you want to use to find equivalent fractions. And then you're going to obviously add them together to find your answer. But again, this is just giving you a great strategy in order for you to have something for your students to develop their plan. Using tape diagrams for fractions in this way is just like using it for whole numbers, right? But just a part whole model, um, but you're able to actually put in mixed numbers. Now, some teachers would actually have them split them into six and do three holes and four six. Um, I'm not that mean, but if you need to do that, go for it. So the last one, division with fractions, this is another uh, really good one to use it for. Um, how many yards long was each of the four pieces? So my statement's going to say each of the four pieces, right, was blank yards long. Didn't I didn't misspell yards, just using an abbreviation. And so I know that I'm looking for anything about pieces, I'm looking for yards, right, I'm looking, I know what I'm looking for. My end is in my mind, I have it, it's my focus, it's what's driving my entire question right now. I know what I'm looking for. So she had a middle piece of strip that was one half yard long. She cut the strip into four pieces of equal length, right? So that automatically tells me that I'm doing division now. I want to know how many yards each of the four pieces was. So I'm going to draw a nice big tape diagram here, draw my fraction model. And I know this would be my whole strip of middle. And so I only had half of a strip of middle, right? So this is what Jazzy had. It was half. And then she cut the strip that she had into four pieces of equal length, right? So she cut it into four equal pieces right here. Now, something that you should be talking about with your students is, however, whatever you do to one side of the fraction, you have to do to the other. So even though we're, we don't really need this, it's still important to help me find out what I... Um, what my new denominator is. So I want to know how long each of my four pieces was. In other words, I need to figure out how big is this piece right here. Well, I started with half, and then each of those, um, each or my half was split into four equal pieces, although they don't look perfectly equal. A um, little, bit, little bit of grace. And so I'm looking for, okay, how big is that right here? So that's one out of one or sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each of these pieces that I had was worth one eighth. So the question is each piece is worth one eighth. So it's a great way to help your students visualize what's happening with their fractions. My two favorite things to do with the tape diagram for fractions is the dividing. And then the first one we did with the multiplication finding um, a fraction of a group because those questions can be so tricky and these questions can be so tricky for students that we've got to give them a concrete strategy that they, okay, I'm going to write a statement. 
Okay, once I figure out, oh, I need to draw a tape diagram and label it. So you're giving students something visual to see that sometimes can kind of be um, an abstract concept for them, right? They don't have a great understanding of what would be uh, one eighth or one fourth of something or what would be um, six tenths of one twenty. So you're giving them a visual model for them to be able to uh, see what they're doing and understand it a little bit better. Hopefully you enjoyed our video. Uh, please check out our tape diagrams with whole numbers and decimals. You can check out our other uh, songs that we um, in instructional videos at Instructed Beats Official on YouTube. You can follow us on Instagram at, at Instructed Beats or always feel free to email us at instructedbeats at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. Instructed Beats out.